Creating a work object in Robot Studio. The first step to creating a program in Robot Studio, or on a real robot for that matter, should always be to define your tool and then create a work object. I'll cover how to make a tool in a later video, but for this one, we're going to use a tool that's built into Robot Studio. Let's get started. Before we move on to importing a tool, attaching it to our robot, and then creating a work object, we're going to take a look at the various coordinate systems. The first one that we're going to look at is the base coordinates. This is tied to the center of the bottom of your robot. And is a point that cannot be repositioned with relation to your robot itself. When we start off, our world coordinate system is tied to the same point as our base coordinate system. But this is something that we may want to redefine depending on our given application. So for example, in past videos, we have actually redefined the location of our base coordinate system in relation to a world coordinate system because our simulation is based off our world coordinates and then we've raised our robot up onto a pedestal so that the base coordinates are actually reoriented uh, in relation to that world coordinates. This is something we do often in a factory when we have multiple different robots tied to a single point in space. This will allow us to get those multiple robots to work on a given part much easier than if we were to use the world coordinate system tied to the base of every robot. Just allows for easier synchronization of movements between machines. The tool coordinate system, or TCP, allows our tool to reorient and connect itself directly to our object so that we can make sure that regardless of where our object is in space, our robot is touching it and working on it in the way that we intended. The other two coordinate systems that you see here, the user coordinates and object coordinates, are a part of what we're going to define today called the work object. Now let's take a look at these two coordinate systems before we move into creating the work object. And we're going to start off by looking at the user coordinate system. The user coordinate system is typically a position that you would define in relation to the jig that's holding your object. And this is based off the world coordinates. Now this is the one position in a work object that you don't necessarily have to define. Although it's a lot more helpful to define the user coordinate system because often your jig will locate your part in a specific position uh, every single time in relation to the outside of the jig. So it's much easier to define the user coordinate system. Although I'm not going to do that in this particular example. The object coordinate system is something that you must define when it comes down to creating a work object. And this is actually based off of the user coordinate system. So the object coordinate system allows us to tie where that part is in relation to our jig. And by having that jig position, it allows us to redefine easily where our product is within our work cell if we say have to add another piece of equipment or adjust the positioning of where our jig is sitting. This just makes it a lot easier than reteaching the object coordinates every single time. So let's take a look at how we do this now. Here's the work cell that I used in a previous video and what we're going to do first is we're going to bring in a tool. Now within Robot Studio we don't have to do a tool first um, but the reason that I suggest that you do is it prepares you for when you go and do this on a real robot. In a real robot you have to have that tool attached 
in order to be able to teach the individual points of the work object. Robot Studio, because we're doing this virtually, we don't have to do that step. So let's take a look at how to add that tool to the robot as though we were doing it uh, in a typical scenario for a real world application. The tool that we're going to use is called Pen Tool, and we find it under the Import Library, Equipment, and this is default to all Robot Studio installations, and we're going to use the Pen Tool. Now when you bring in the pen, it's going to, by default, as always, bring your object in at the world coordinate zero. So we're going to right click on our pen, and we want to attach this to our robot. So we're going to say Attach To, and we're going to say T Rob 1. It's going to say, do you want to update the position? We're going to say yes, because we want the coordinate systems to be aligned. Now when we do this, you're going to notice that the tool on your robot automatically changes from tool 0, which is the center of the base of the flange, to pen TCP. This coordinate system, if we zoom in here, and we're going to pan a little bit and rotate. You can see the coordinate system here is down at the bottom of the rope or bottom of the pen. Right? Because this is the part of the pen that is actually going to do the work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a work object and I'm going to relate the work or the object coordinate system, sorry, to the object that's sitting on my conveyor. So to do this, we're going to say, from the home menu, we're going to go other, and we're going to create a work object. You want to name your work object something that relates to the object that you're working on. So I'm going to call mine my part. And under the miscellaneous data section, we also get the ability that we can actually attach the uh, work object to another robot so you can have one robot hold on to the part while another robot works on the part and they simultaneously manipulate around. We're definitely not going to get into that right now. That's a much more advanced operation. We can also have a work object moved by a mechanical unit so if this part was moving on a conveyor we could define which conveyor it's moving on. But what we're going to do here is, now that we've named our work object, we're going to define the object frame. Now the procedure to define the object frame and user frame is much the same. What we're going to do is we're going to select frame by points. And we're going to say that we want to use the three point method. So what it wants you to do is it wants you to specify two points on the x-axis, so the first point on the x-axis needs to line up with the point that you're going to use on the y-axis. The second point on the x-axis can be any point on the x. So looking at my part here, if I rotate around a little bit so that I'm facing my part and I'm going to zoom in, I've got two ideal points and I'm going to turn on my point snap here. So I'm going to say snap end and I want to use surface selection. So now you can see that my points are going to snap to the end of these uh, lines here. So this line here, this side, is in line with the X. And these two points here are in line on the Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select or put my cursor in my first point and I'm going to select that back corner then it automatically moves my cursor to the second point so I'm going to define the front point here on the X and then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to define this point on the Y. Once I've got my three positions picked I'm going to say accept and then finally create and now you're going to see a frame tied to my work object and if we've done this correctly you're going to see the red line of your frame line up with the X of your world coordinate system. The yellow or sorry the green line of your frame is going to line up with the Y and the Z 
should be pointing up in this case. That's how to go about creating and tying a work object to your given uh, part in Robot Studio. In the next video, I'll go through how to add points and get your robot to actually run a program based on this work object. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.